eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition and lift off. Go Falcon, go PSF. Stage one propulsion is nominal. Vehicle is pitching downrange. That incredible view means that Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Pad 40. And right now we are throttling down to prepare for max Q in about 30 seconds. As you may have heard us explain before, this is the period of highest aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle. Power and telemetry nominal. That's because at this point, we are seeing the greatest difference in dynamic pressure, which is increasing with the rocket speed, and ambient static pressure, which is decreasing as we move up through the Earth's atmosphere. Vehicle is supersonic. With that call out, we know that Falcon 9 is moving faster than the speed of sound. Max Q. With confirmation that we've passed through Max Q, we have three events coming up in quick succession, starting with main engine cutoff, stage separation, SES 1, or second engine start 1. Main engine cutoff, or MECO for short, is where all nine Merlin 1D engines will shut off to slow down the vehicle in preparation for the next event, stage separation, or stage, has started. stage step for short. That's where the first stage booster will separate from the second stage. Right after stage step, the first stage will start its journey back to Earth, tar targeting a landing on our drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas, which is currently stationed in the Atlantic Ocean, about 680 kilometers downrange. Now, during that time, stage two will continue on its journey to space with the third event, second engine start one, or SES one on the nets. And this is where the single MVAC engine will ignite to propel the second stage along with the PSN Citria payload to orbit. In addition to these three major events, the fairing halves will also separate less than a minute after SES one. So keep an eye out for all of those coming up in about 10 seconds. Main engine cut off. Stage separation confirmed. MVAC startup. So you heard the call outs there and you can see on your screen in this great dual view that we have that the MVAC engine on our second stage has ignited. Now this is the first of two second stage burns that we're tracking for this mission. And the first stage on the left hand side of your screen is coming back to land on our drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas. Now, we are also expecting fairing deployment. Both vehicles are on nominal trajectories. With that, we know that both vehicles are headed in the right direction. And as I was describing earlier, we are expecting fairing separation in just about five seconds. Fairing separation confirmed. As some of you mentioned earlier, a reusability is part of our secret sauce here at SpaceX. So with that confirmation of fairing separation, we know that both of those are coming home again. The first, or one of them is flying signal Bermuda. for the seventh time and the other for its ninth. It's now T plus three minutes and 55 seconds into today's mission. And we have a great view of stage one on the left and stage two on the right. In order to complete today's landing, the first stage has two more burns left. Next up will be the entry burn where three of the Merlin engines on the first stage will reignite. And this will help slow down the F9 first stage as it reenters the upper part of the Earth's atmosphere. That entry burn should start in about two-ish minutes from now and will last about 20 seconds. You can see two of the four hypersonic grid fins that are on the that are positioned near the base of the inner stage on the on the booster. And stage one is currently using nothing but the grid fins for steering as it's returning back to Earth.
You can also see those little puffs of gas. Those are nitrogen gas bursts for attitude control, and they also help orient the rocket on its way back down. some really awesome views of planet Earth behind stage two. And again, that entry burn on the first stage coming up in about a minute. Both vehicles are on nominal trajectories. Like I promised, we have great views of Earth behind MVAC and, and behind the first stage as it's coming back down to Earth. Stage one entry burn startup. You can see that three of those engines have now relit engines one, five, and nine for the entry burn. It's about 20 seconds for this burn. Stage one entry burn shutdown. Now with confirmation of entry burn shutdown, we have one last burn before the first stage attempts to land on our drone ship. And stage that one is, FTS has saved. And that is the landing burn. During the first stage landing burn, a single Merlin engine, E9, will relight and slow the vehicle down for its landing attempt on our drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas. As a reminder, the booster supporting today's mission has now flown for its 12th time, having previously supported CRS-22, Crew-3 and Crew-4, Turksat 5B, CRS-25, Eutelsat Hotbird 13G, O3B Empower, and four Starlink missions. We'll also be coming up on Seco 1, or second engine cutoff 1, in about 30 seconds from now. Stage 1 transonic. Stage 2 FTS is saved. You can see that MBAC continuing to glow bright orange until Seco 1. I'm going to orbit insertion. And back shut down. Great callouts for Seco 1 and nominal orbital Stage insertion. Stage 1 landing burn. Expected loss of signal, Cape Canaveral. There's that view of landing burn. Stage 1 landing leg deploy. and a great Stage view of landing. This landing marks the 12th successful landing for this particular booster and marks our 201st overall successful recovery of an orbital class rocket. In addition to landing with confirmation of successful second engine cutoff and good orbit, we are going into a coast phase up until the second relight of our MBAC engine on the second stage, which will be followed by payload deploy. Till then, sit tight and we'll see you back here at the T plus 27 minute mark.